Hi guys, as every Blizzard fan knows, Heroes of the Storm, the new free-to-play MOBA, is coming out really soon. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why you need to start getting ready to quit League of Legends and Dota, as Heroes of the Storm is going to be the next big thing in game. Everyone who's played a MOBA knows that they're one of PC's most polarizing genres. They tend to push people into being hardcore gamers who have to sink hundreds of hours into them to get good, or players who quit after a few games, put off by their notoriously toxic communities. Heroes of the Storm is a breath of fresh air to that scene, as it cuts out all the baggage that makes this genre so contentious. When we look at Heroes, we see some really big changes to the familiar MOBA design. First off, player experience and gold are gone, and all the staples of the genre which build on these are gone too. Items, gone. Prolonged laning phases to farm up these items, gone. And a metagame which pushes half the players onto carry champions who have all the gold and experience funneled onto them, while the rest of the team gets relegated to underfarmed and underpowered champions, is gone too. So what does Heroes do instead? First off, there's team experience and team levels. Nothing is individual, it's all about the team. And everyone being on the same level means everyone is equally powerful. Second, you get all of your abilities from level 1. There's no skill ranks at all. Instead of those traditional forms of progression, you now get talents at level 1 and every 3 levels after that. At each talent tier, you get to choose one of 3 to 5 different things, which either alter your existing abilities, or give you new ones instead. For example, you might be able to pick 25% extra range on one of your abilities, or maybe get a new ability which drops a totem that heals everyone near it. Third, the game says screw 20 minutes of farming in lanes to get to 20 minutes of team fighting. It's just started the team fighting. The map design is really unique. Each map has an extremely powerful objective that you need to be fighting over pretty much from level one. There are seven completely different maps right now, with more to come. Two of the games I'm showing in this video are from the Black Hearts Bay map, and the objective here is to collect coins that drop from monsters and chests, and turn these into Blackheart at the center. Once you've turned in enough, this pirate ship will blow a big chunk out of your enemy's base. This map is particularly crazy, and there are skirmishes happening all the time, and huge teamfights breaking out whenever someone tries to turn in their coins to Blackheart. Maybe the biggest difference between Heroes and Dota though, is that it's much harder to suck. Tricky skills that take a long time to learn, like last hitting and item builds, just aren't in the game. And because of the focus on objectives, dying isn't half as punishing as it is in other games. There's also a somewhat hidden feature in place, in the form of a serious catch-up mechanic that gives teams bonus experience when they're behind. And this means that games almost never snowball out of control. All of us have played countless league games where you've clearly won or lost after 10 minutes, yet you're stuck waiting 30 minutes more for that to happen. It's refreshing to play Heroes and know you can always make a comeback. Now on the flip side, a higher skill floor also means lower skill ceiling. And because you can't get super farmed, you really can't hard carry a game. This can be a positive or a negative depending on how you look at it, but basically, games are won by teams, not by players. One interesting consequence of this is that communicating positively with your team often does more good than just being an individually skilled player. For example, I was in a game yesterday and three of us on the team were dead, there's only two left alive. We were on the Cursed Hollow map and the objective there is that a token will appear at a random part of the map and you need to collect it. Five players on the enemy team were at the token, and when I looked at the two guys still alive on my team, I, I could just see in their eyes that they were going to run in and just die for nothing. So I opened up my chat and said, don't go in, you're just going to die. Wait till we respawn, we'll go take the boss, and maybe we can make a comeback that way. And they did listen, they stopped running towards their death, we respawned, took the boss, and eventually won the game. Most importantly, from a community perspective though, because the game is so much more less punishing, it means that the players are less punishing too. Yeah, there's still toxicity, but it's nothing compared to the stuff I saw when I was playing League. And from a social perspective, playing with friends is very easy and very rewarding. Team games are more fun when your friends are the team. 
But design of other MOBAs kind of gets in the way of that because individual skill matters so much. The higher skill floor in Heroes means that the game is so much more accessible to new players and it also means that a veteran can go and play with new friends who've just picked up the game. You don't have to wait until your friend has completed hundreds of games to get the skills necessary. So in conclusion, Heroes is an absolute blast when you combine the accessibility of the game with the brand recognition and talent of Blizzard, there's no doubt at all this is going to be huge. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you're getting as hyped for Heroes as I am, and I'll see you all on the Nexus. Your core is under attack! Thank you.